You're listening to Elevate, the official podcast of Elite Agent Magazine for real estate industry sales professionals, property managers, and leaders. Each episode, we bring you behind the scenes coaching, news analysis, exclusive interviews, technology, and more to help you list more, sell more, and elevate your results. To subscribe to the magazine, visit eliteagent.com.au forward slash subscribe. Here is your host, Samantha McLean. Hey, hey, Samantha McLean from Elite Agent Magazine. This week on the Weekly Wrap, we have Elite Agent, regular contributor and super coach, Josh Fegan. After coaching our Transform crew this week, he took some time out to chat to us about negotiation tactics, what's working for his clients right now, and why you should be playing offense instead of defense. So welcome, Josh Fegan. Sam, great to be here. Yeah, thank you. And um, just a quick thank you as well, because you've been a contributor to Elite Agent Magazine since issue one, three or four years ago, like you've been in the magazine for a long time. So it's fantastic to have you in the office and on the podcast today. Privilege and a pleasure. So you're also speaking at ARIC this year. Yeah, that's good. So uh, fourth time, which is amazing and a great opportunity. Yeah, well, can't wait to see you there. And you are the busiest man in real estate. You are the rock of real estate. Like they say, Chris Rock is the busiest man in Hollywood. I reckon you're the busiest man in real estate. Yeah, we like to work with uh, a lot of people. And you're really lucky that there's plenty of travel in that too. So you get to see a fair bit of the country. Yeah, cool. So we've just been talking to the Transform guys. And one thing that you did mention in the very beginning when we first started talking was that everyone is feeling a bit negative with the market being a bit flat at the moment. And you said to me that there are a lot of agents out there that are playing defense and what's the alternative right now? So, you know, I think it's such a great question. You know, the industry has been fascinated with things purely around, you know, disruptors and what the industry is doing and what the competing agents are doing and how we fight on fee and how we beat the lead generation websites and all of that's defense conversation. None of it is offense conversation. Mm. And the offense conversation is that how do you be a role model? How do you set the new path? How do you put yourself in a position that you say, hey, you know what, this is what we need to do. And for me, the best agents are in a position that they have no regard for the competition and they spend all their time instead focused on the customer because the customer is the one that pays the invoices. So it's really about understanding what's the job you can get done for the customer and how do you become more valuable for them. So then they say, you know what, Sam's my agent. She's exceptional in what she did and she actually really helped us out here. And those are the moments that matter when you turn service failure into service success. So what are some of the ways in which you think agents can play better offense out in the marketplace right now? I think, you know, you should spend some more time with your current customers. You should spend some more time with your competitors' customers. And you should spend some time with people that are non-customers. And actually ask them, what do you find are the things that go on during the course of a real estate transaction? What are the pain points? What's the stuff that's ugly, that doesn't feel great, that is just awful, that is annoying, that really gets you, you know, that if I could fix would actually make it a great experience for my end customer. And for an industry that talks a lot about service standards, it's pretty amazing that not many businesses actually have them. And we talk about sometimes in industry, you'll hear people go, oh, you know, we provide six star service. I'm like, okay, great. So what's the difference between six and five star then? Mm. Where's that clearly shown? Because if you go to a five-star versus a four-star resort, one's got a pool, the other one doesn't. One's got a tennis court, the other one doesn't. But yet when you go into a real estate office, there is no clear differentiation between what is apparently a six-star service. And I love it. Agents who talk about providing a six-star level of service, but yet they charge a one-star fee. It doesn't, it doesn't make, sense. make sense. There actually needs to be a margin. If you're going to build a team, you're going to increase your cost of sales. But the benefit of that is that you have a team, you have the best marketer, you have the best person to be able to deal with the sales side of stuff, you have the best person to be able to negotiate, you have the best auctioneer. That costs money and that's therefore why you get a premium result. So I think that where the industry can really benefit is actually start playing offense and start understanding that the customer is going to come to your website. What are they going to find? There's no point spending all this money in redirecting traffic from social media sources and different websites to get them back to your website if your website doesn't answer the customer's questions. Mm. And you've got to know what the customer's questions are. You know, you go to real estate agents' websites in Australia and what do you see on the front cover? Properties for sale. Well, no, I'm an executor right now. I'm trying to sell a property and I don't know how to do it and what my role is as an executor and how you can help me with that. I'm going through a divorce. I have to move because I've got a job relocation. I've got to do it quickly. So when you actually start to think more about what the customer's questions are, how do you answer those? Yeah. And that's actually what makes you highly valuable as an agent is, is that when you zigzag, they zag, you know, that old conversation and say, so like, do the opposite. That often makes you very successful. So whilst a lot of people are very worried about the competition, are very worried about lower fees, they're very worried about what's happening in the industry, what I'm thinking is, is that you go the other way and you start thinking about how do you become more valuable to the customer. Yeah, absolutely. And then they can't live without you almost because... Well, that's why you get referred because you're good at what you do. 
And you know what? If you're good at what you do, you don't have to tell other people that. Your customers will talk for you. Yeah. So we filled a lot of questions from the Transformers this afternoon, which you very graciously answered. Well, they were great. They were hungry and, you know, they're keen to actually grow in their career. And I think that that's the testament of a great agent is this little saying that you just never know when or where you're going to learn something. So if you're not turning up to training, there's no way you can transform. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of the questions came in to do with, you know, like we're feeling a bit of the market softening. And look, April is an awkward month this year, right, because we've had Easter got Anzac Day in a few weeks, got yeah, your so, birthday. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> There's like three or so four-day work weeks in like five weeks or so. And what naturally happens is that it's not a barometer on the market, in my opinion, because it's abnormal market conditions. And even though you might be all pumped up and ready to go, when you talk to end consumers, they're tired, stressed, trying to have a holiday, school holidays, this, what are we doing around that? So from that perspective, I think it's really important to know that the real barometer on a market is your ability to be able to get a buyer to pay mm-hmm. and to be able to drive buyer urgency. And what a great agent does is that they drive buyer urgency regardless of market conditions. You know, the old Jim Rowan quote, when the wind changes, you've got to change the set of the sail. So in other words, when the market changes, you need new skill sets. And most agents haven't yet adapted to what those new skill sets are. Simple things like compression selling, getting more than one buyer at a property through an inspection, being in a position that you actually know who are the buyers that actually want to buy. You know, someone makes an offer, someone turns up at an auction, someone bids on a property, they want to buy. Your job as an agent is to now help them to facilitate that, show them something, work out why they're dissatisfied, what's the vision of what they're looking for, and how can I make those people make the next steps in order to be able to complete that purchase. So the guys were asking a lot of questions around the topic of negotiation. And if you don't mind me getting a bit tactical with you here, because some of them were deep in the trenches kind of questions that I'm sure some of the listeners would be thinking about right now as well. Here's the scenario. A buyer says they want to make an offer, but before they do, they want to know if anyone else has made an offer. What do you say to that? Well, I think that the reality of it is here is that what you're trying to do is is that really understand what the customer is trying to do. And they're worried because they want to try and buy a property. So obviously they might have been burnt in a previous experience. They might have missed out on another property because the process isn't clear. So I think that you say, look, you know, hey, Sam, thanks so much. And, you know, at the end of the day, what I want to do is I want to help you to buy the home. The way that I can help you to buy the home is we've got to have an offer. And in order to have an offer, there's some things that we've got to get. We've got to find out the name or entity you're going to buy it in, the solicitor, deposit, maybe, for example, the settlement timeline, any conditions that come with the offer, and maybe anything else. And, and then finally, the purchase price itself. But Sam, let's not worry about where the other offers are. Let's be really clear about where you're at and where you see value. Because I want to help you to buy the home. And if we're in a position that we're in a multiple offer scenario, then I've actually got a fact sheet that shows you what we do in that. But we're not in a multiple offer scenario right now. We're in a situation that I'm here working with you and you want to buy the home. So let's do that. And that's very positive language that you're using here that's causing me to say, yep, yep, yep. Well, it's about being natural. Like, I actually want to help you. Yeah. I'd love to help you to do that. And I think that, you know, too many people come back. I saw an email reply that a client sent me today, which, you know, is amazing. A buyer has asked, what's the price guide on this particular property? And the agents replied back, well, if you have to ask that, then it's not in your price range. Oh. And I'm like, okay, great. Well, that's a really clear someone who deserves to be disrupted. You know, at the end of the day, modern consumers say, look, and there's different legislation in different parts of the country around what you can and can't say, but at least referring to recent sales and giving them a bit of an idea on what properties are selling for in the area, it's a can I or can I not? Yeah, well, even if it's incoming, it's worth a conversation. Absolutely. Pick up the phone and let's get real. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Here's a good one for you, Josh. What about... If you have a genuine buyer, how would you approach a homeowner without sounding like you were being needy or just trying to get a listing? Well, I think that you got to go with that sense of caution. And if you don't have a phone number and you can't track one down, then, you know, you got no choice but to go door to door. And I think that that's like a late afternoon thing. Hopefully when, you know, kids are home from school, knock on the door and say, hi, um, my name's Josh. I'm a local real estate agent. Here's my business card. I know this is a little bit unusual, but I genuinely, I, I have a particular person who has asked me to come and approach you because they are interested in buying your home. Now, they haven't seen inside of it to understand the value and where that sits, but I just thought, look, I'm going to ask the question, would you even remotely consider selling it? And if so, what sort of price point would you put on it? And if that came together, it's great. What we would need to do is to get a basic agency agreement in play so I can show the buyer through. And obviously, depending on what state, we might need to get a contract or whatever organized if you were interested in doing that. And if that buyer bought, great. If not, we're not going to market my job is here because someone's actually asked me because they're interested in buying your home. And to be honest, they were nervous themselves about knocking on the door. So they've asked me to do it as an agent. So, you know, that's where we sit and I'd love to help you if we can. Yeah, good answer. Another question from the guys, obviously your skills in negotiation are really key right now because of the way that the market is and it can be quite 
nerve wracking, particularly for new agents. So how do you calm the butterflies and the self-talk when you're in that sort of situation and you're feeling a bit nervous? I think the most important part is that you need to be able to take control and understand that people are people. You think you're nervous, you go on the other side of the bar or the cellar. They're like literally more nervous than you'll ever be. So what I'm going to say is that just be a person, be human. This is where good quality market knowledge and stock knowledge is a really important part because you can actually say, well, look, you know, based off this recent sale at Jones Street and West Street, it actually underpins the value. So that's where you're going to need to be to be in that decision range. So to be really confident, you need to understand what you do when you actually take an offer and how you actually then get them to move up to really understand the decision range and where they need to be in order to be able to make that offer acceptable. And I think that people want to know what they need to do in order to win. And that's your job as an agent is to help to facilitate that conversation so that then you can say, look, this is exactly what you need to do to put yourself in a position of buying a home. And I'm going to help you to do that, Sam. Let me show you how we do it. Okay? <laughs> you're the best. But I, but I just think like you've got to have positive language. You've got to move people forward. And good markets, bad markets in different markets, GFCs, non-GFCs, 25 buyers at an open who all want to bid and make an offer prior to the end of the open home. It's all about how you treat people, how you make them feel. I think this is an important part. You're going to get some people that are burnt, unfortunately, by bad agents who don't get back and don't have those conversations. But your job is to actually say, well, disregard all of that. Right now, I have the ability to be in this room and to actually create an experience for this person. And this is a great experience for them. This is a massive step forward in their life because I'm actually going to help them to make the decision to come and buy the property. You know, when you get clear on purpose, it changes a lot of things. And what's the purpose of your organization? You know, Compass in America, we had Leonard Steinberg come and speak at ARIC, I think, last year. And I saw their purpose the other day and it was pretty cool, you know, because it was about helping everyone to find their place in the world. And so, you know what, that's easy then because like going to work every day, I'm going to try and help someone find their place in the world today. Now, tell me, how can you not be excited by that when you're helping a buyer, when you're helping a seller, when you're involved in a negotiation? Can you stop making this about you and start making it about the customer and their situation and their feelings and their emotions and what they're going through and actually helping them? Because you do that, you can have an incredible business. It's Mm. awesome. So exciting. Like real estate is the best career that you'll ever get. You don't have to stand behind a desk for too long. You get out in front of consumers. You get to meet great people. You get to help people in some really difficult situations. You also get to help some people that are in some amazing situations. Your job to be that trusted advisor, make sure you've got the energy in the deal. You know, there's three things that make a great deal come together. A motivated owner, a motivated seller, right? And a motivated buyer and obviously a motivated agent. So how do you get a motivated owner? How do you get a motivated buyer? How do you get a motivated agent? And the worst thing out of all of those is to actually get someone who's an unmotivated agent. You know, what's worse than a sales coach? An unmotivated sales coach. What's worse than an unmotivated sales coach? An unmotivated sales coach who's available. So you see where I'm coming? Like you people want to buy the energy of what you do. You just briefly touched on being the agent that can help people, manage people through different times in their life. What are the main pain points that an agent needs to be able to manage a vendor through right now? I think this is a really important part is to know what they're going through first. So here's an example to cease estate. You're an executor. Sam, have you been an executor before? No, you haven't. Okay. And are there some beneficiaries? Yeah, there are. Okay. And do all the beneficiaries get along? Mm, Not really. Okay. So my job then as the agent is to actually help you to deal with those beneficiaries so that they don't obstruct the sale so we can get the best result for everyone. What I want to do is I want to take the pressure off you. Would that be okay if I took the pressure off you? You know, that's a great quote by Jason Boone, you know, where he would say that the job of a great agent is to actually take the pressure off the client. And so if you can do that and you can demonstrate how you can handle it, you can change a lot of things. To me, the market's great. You know, there are still people that want to buy. There are still people that want to sell. We've got a transactional system and if values have come off one, two, three, four, five percent 4%, that's okay because in most markets it went up 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, you know, so it's okay. So you've got to deal with your conditions of the day and I think never lose faith that the client has instructed you to be their agent because you know what to do in this situation right now. So don't second guess yourself, back yourself in. Absolutely. Let's talk about ARIC again for a moment. I think it's like 70 days or something. Yeah, it's close. It might even be less now. What do you think are going to be the main takeaways or what do you think agents should be looking to take away from something like ARIC this year? You know, the big opportunities, you're going to see some amazing speakers. You know, you've got people like Alexander Phillips and Prue Kelly there, you know, number one agent in the country and his EA talking to you about what's going to happen. 
off the back of that, then you're going to see guys like Phil Harris runs an exceptional business in Adelaide, talking a lot about what he does in, in process and how he's grown so many great salespeople. And then there's plenty of great coaches and plenty of great people going to come and share the stories. A lot of the learning will actually happen over dinner. A lot of the learning will actually happen over the mid breaks when you come and talk to you know people out you know in the exhibition in the convention hall. And ultimately, to be highly successful, often the most successful people are really good at one or two things. Yeah. When you look at Alexander Phillips, number one agent in the country, what makes him highly successful is that he makes more phone calls than anyone I know. He books more face to face appointments. I think last year it was something like five hundred market appraisals that was conducted. And of those, you know, he's in a position of two hundred and fifty, maybe two hundred and eighty listing presentations, of which he wins two hundred of those. He still lost eighty. Okay, you know, so don't think that you just win everything. One of the things is that like you can go through the whole Eric experience and you can be there. And for me, my whole conversation is is that I want to do something quite different for people in that how do they actually affect change? How do they help people to make that decision to buy? How do they help people to make that decision to sell? Because if you can learn how to affect change, you'll be a really powerful agent. Yeah, absolutely. So you're going to have those great show bags there this year. Yeah, we will. Everybody like pounces on you for those big black bags. So we've just got them in now and we're busy packing them already to make sure that we've got them ready for the day. And there's a great opportunity. We've got some audio in there that we've recorded. The guys um, who I think were on the front cover of Elite actually, uh, Dean and Darren from O'Brien's in Melbourne have done a recording with us about about being a business owner, which is cool. And then Alexander and Prue have done a recording with us as well. They're speaking about them as what they do and how they do it. So there's a bit more of an extension to what you'll see on stage. Yeah, awesome. And what's happening with Josh Fegan for the rest of the year? Same as usual. You know, like we're very clear that our job is to help all of our clients to be ridiculously successful, to adapt to market conditions, to grow really fast, to be in a position that they have profitable growth, you know, to allow people to exit businesses and allow people to enter businesses. And so our whole job is, you know, always the same. It's about being in a position that we need to stay five or six steps ahead of where the industry is at. We need to be really clear about what's a trend versus what's a fad. And we need to be really making sure, does this actually help the end consumer and does this make you a better agent? And if it does those things, then we can train it, you know? Yeah, well, I love the work that you're doing around the customer being the centre. I'd say this to you. One of the great secrets of success is this, be interested. Be interested in people, be interested in their story, be interested in what you can do for them. And if you do that, you'll have an incredible business. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that might be a good place to leave it. I just wanted to ask you quickly, how can people learn more about the coaching that you do? Yeah, sure. So obviously we've got a podcast as well, a high performance podcast with Alex. So that's great. And we'll go to our website and we've got our daily email, which comes out every day and you can get that. It doesn't cost anything. Joshfeg.com.au. Cool. Thanks so much, Josh. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Okay. See you at Eric. To subscribe to the magazine, visit eliteagent.com.au forward slash subscribe.